One group that is going to be substantially affected by this are uh, uh, local government, and it's slightly fitting, therefore, that we have a, a representative of Auckland Council coming to give our next talk. <laughs> Kaya. Thank you. Tēnā koutou katou. And so I'm happy to be here to introduce to this new program from the Auckland Council that is just starting. As this one, wrong button. So as you've been seeing since this morning, we live in a region where, which is a really hot spot for seabirds. Chris introduced very well this morning all the species and how New Zealand is an hot spot around the world for biodiversity of seabirds, but actually the Haraki Gulf, it's a not spot for species within New Zealand. And we have so many species that breed here. Some of them breed only here and nowhere else. And a number of other species cross and use the Gulf and the waters just for foraging or their movements. The problem is that when we look at their conservation status, they are not doing so well. Actually, almost all of them are threatened at different level with extinction. And this need to be taken into account and need absolute action. A couple of years ago, were published Sea Change, which is the Iraqi Gulf Mining Expansion Plan, which is a groundbreaking initiative to design uh, a way to create a healthy, productive, and sustainable future for the Iraqi Gulf. It has a, a number of different things, and one of them, luckily, is to have restored species diversity and abundance. So really take into account to halt the biodiversity loss and to re-establish all the biodiversity. And concerning the seabirds, there are three points that are really um, important. One is to maintain the uh, predator-free status of island, to develop priority management actions and research for seabirds and shore population, and to improve the quality of seabirds and shore habitat. So in the framework, it's following to the um, publication of sea change, the Natural Environment Target Trade decided to fund a 10 years long program for the restoration of seabirds within the Auckland region. And in particular, so the objective is to improve the protection and restoration of Auckland seabirds through the coordination of seabird monitoring, research, and restoration, <coughs> which translated into very simple terms is we do monitoring, we set up long term monitoring to see how the population are doing. We set research to understand all other ecology, foraging, all other parameters, and we provide this information that will be converted into restoration action. And so it's really practical term to have an impact for the seabirds. And so step one, when I arrived here, was of course to determine the transline situation. Which species, where they are, the population side, the breeding success as a first step, and then in the years establish, hopefully, the trend and other things. As you've been seeing during the World Day, there are a lot of research already going on, so of course we are trying to coordinate and to establish collaboration. And we feel, as Auckland Council, we try to understand where were the knowledge gap, the places, or the species that people were less taking into account and so having them as a starting point. The other big challenge is that the Auckland region, we should cover the whole Auckland region, which is pretty wide, so we really needed to find a starting point. And so I'm presenting you now some places and research and monitoring that we started doing that are absolutely ongoing because we are right in the middle of the first season. So it will be just this. And we decided so to start, one of the points are the noises, that are this group of islands that are right in the middle of the Haraki Gulf. They are pretty important for the um, ecology and the conservation. And one island that we decided to start with is Maria. Maria is a tiny island. It's the first island in New Zealand to be declared a predator free. And it hosts a huge population of white faced trumpeters. White faced trumpeters breed in only two islands here in the Auckland region here and in Borges, and here we have no idea how many birds there are. We know that there are birds everywhere, but no idea which is the population. And so we started to head up there. 
with the main difficulty that is walking through the island because there are boroughs everywhere and you can really not step around and trying to count how many uh, birds and they are sitting on eggs now and also as you find here we managed to find the flat water so we are also trying to find out which other species are breeding on this island and hopefully to have uh, soon more information. Another place is that we went recently, we were with the planters and with Christy Woods that you hear in video right before. It's Fanal Island. Fanal, it's part of the Mokohi group. And as you can see from this picture, it has this huge cliff that runs all across the highlands, at which made the island pretty difficult to reach from the sea. And this is one of the reasons this has barely been explored. We have a very rough idea and the trips there are very uh, rare. So we were dropped there by helicopter actually and we had the plan of exploring the island with uh, plots across the whole island to go there, set a square and count by 10 meters by 10 meters and count all the vegetation and all the, bird, the birds we could find. And we had very different environment, actually the biggest difficulty in this case is the vegetation is really very thick and very dense and walking around, we had uh, more higher forests, lower forests, a lot of flax, this is not language that puts the rock for our square. We found many places with no burrows or low densities and places with very high densities of burrows. We could confirm some of the species that were suspected and known to be there, like gray-faced uh, petrel, fluttering the village waters and diving petrels, but also we found, so these nests, for example, were very big and all empty. And so we are planning actually to go back there again in January to see of all the summer breeders and who can we find there that was not already starting the breeding season at the moment. And another interesting thing, and it's we find some bird remains that have been predated. We observed more pork and harrier on the island, and we find remains of one faced on petrol that actually could be there, and we find some remains of fairy primates. So now the question is, were the birds being predated there because they breed there, or just because they were predated out at sea and bring to land just for be eaten? And so the idea is to go there and put acoustic recorders a bit everywhere and try, as all the species are recognizable by their vocalization, try to record them. And then the Okinawa region is also the coastline. It's just, just the tiny island in Los. And so one thing that we are running, it's a coastal surveys of all the shacks population. So high shack and little shack. We run with the boat across all the shoreline and around Wahiki, Chamberlain's and the biggest island more closer to the coast, spotting trees with colonies and counting birds, chicks and nests, hopefully to confirm. And finally, this is the actually ancient project, the, the most old project from the Hoffman Council in the white areas, uh, carried so far by the landers and looking and monitoring the gray face petrel and little penguins, often using also detection dog to find the nest in the middle of the vegetation. So this is what is going on, what we are starting. So what's next? First of all, keeping and concluding the, this first season. So uh, monitoring the mm, breeding and breeding success and fledging of the white face on petrel in Maria Islands, but also on Borges, this is the other known population, to have a comparison of the two. Put the, the acoustic recorders and to monitor for summer breeders in Fanal, complete the, sh the survey on the shags, and then analyze all those data and try to find out with old and past data that are available <coughs> if we already can see some difference knowing that, of course, it's not just with one year that we can see some different, but could give some indication. And then, of course, we are already developing a research program and collaboration with many people that are here in this room today, and hopefully so to join efforts together because we have all the same goal. Another idea that we are setting in place also is to uh, carry out some research at sea and some surveys at sea. 
because these birds spend the majority of the time out at sea and implement and work together and integrate the information from land and sea can really add value and much more information. And then of course extend to more areas and more species the monitoring of across the region. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we've made it to afternoon tea. <laughs>